Here then is a closer look at the Rover Puck transceiver when it's plugged into mains power. That little wire coming in from the bottom uh, connects to a little wall wart power supply in the usual fashion, nothing too surprising there. And around the edges there are various buttons. If it was a clock face, at the 10 o'clock position, on the edge there's a teeny tiny little power on off button. You hold it in, and if you hold it in for a little while, lights start to flash as it comes on. At the 2 o'clock position, there's another, one, another little teeny tiny button, the Activate WiMAX Signal Strength Test button. When you're connected to a WiMAX signal, if you hold that button in, some little LEDs glow down in the, LED, the status LEDs area. There are various status LEDs that indicate whether it's got power, whether it's got a WiMAX connection, um, the, the basic status of the device, and it's fairly easy to figure out. Overall, I found it fairly intuitive, although it was a little tricky finding the teeny tiny little buttons, but it wasn't, it wasn't very difficult, and, and uh, I got used to it easily. When you first open the box, the instructions assume that the battery is dead and they urge you to plug it in for a while, which I did, until the power LED changed color as described in the manual. At that point, I decided to turn it on and see if it would connect with a WiMAX signal in my area. I found I had to move it around to a specific area in my house, actually near a window, before it would connect. This is what it looked like when I did. The various LEDs flashed and glowed and went through a pattern that, that made sense to me as I consulted the manual. Eventually, after I found the right place in my house near a window and waited about, oh, 60 seconds or so, the flashing antenna signal, the WiMAX status indicator, stopped flashing and went into a steady state glow. That is what you want to see. It indicated that I was connected to the clear WiMAX station in my neighborhood and I was ready to proceed. I was then able to go to my laptop computer and use Wi-Fi to connect to the rover puck exactly as I would connect with any other uh, hotspot. I had to turn the rover puck upside down and read the WPA encrypting key that's written on the bottom of it and enter that. But I'm familiar with that technique and it's well documented here at other places in AskMrWizard.com. Using those techniques I was able to connect to the rover puck and I was automatically then brought to their sign-on website, which and we'll look at that next.